Corona Indoor Nationals coming up in just a couple of minutes. This may be the greatest and stupidest idea that I've ever had. Uh, I've got the pre-competition jitters because I want to beat Spalding uh, at the high jump today. Uh, just like you guys when you prepare for something for like two days and the competition comes up. Uh, you want to be ready. You want to perform your best. I'm, I'm all for that. That's what I want. Uh, but I got to start by... Uh, Thanking the sponsors, uh, today's high jump at the Corona, Corona Indoor Nationals is brought to you by the Dan Gabor Memorial Invitational, uh, hosted by Amador Valley High School every year. This year, uh, very little doubt, the, the, greatest comp the greatest high school track and field competition to take place in the state of California. Uh, hosted John Lester, the, uh, the national leader in the 800, both high school and NCAA uh, with a time of 152.06 and you know it looks like it might stand up. Um, also the one-two finish by Amador Valley is Ewan Houston and Aiden McCarthy in 418 and 419 so uh, next year if you got an open spot come on out to, to Amador Valley High School on the first Saturday of March. Uh, 100 heats of the 100 we'll try to do it in under two hours. Uh, it's going to take us just a few minutes to warm up here. We'll get ready and we'll, we'll get to today's high jump. So just so you guys get to see, this is day two of my shelter-in-place beard. Uh, three weeks from now, it's going to be a real beard again. Uh, but that's what we got for now, a little five o'clock shadow going. So when track happens indoors, a lot of times we have to make some compromises for the, the shape of the building and the facility, things like that. Uh, if you've watched the major meets, you know, the ones that happen at the Armory, the ones that happen at Boston University, th those facilities are built for indoor track, so they don't have to make all of those compromises. But if you've ever done track at light or indoor track at a high school in the Northeast, some of them are, you know, the lengths of the tracks are very different. They might be like 150 yards. It might be, you might get a 200 meter track, it might be flat, it might be banked, all kinds of different things. Well, this is not a professional facility, this is what we put together, and so there are some challenges even here with the high jump. Uh, here's our landing apparatus, it's a beanbag chair on top of a mattress. Uh, we're going to be jumping over some chairs and a broom. Uh, Probably the biggest challenge is that we don't quite have the space to curve into the bar, so it's going to make it a lot harder. It's, it's a lot more of a straight-on approach uh, than what seasoned high jumpers are, are really used to. Um, I'm not a seasoned high jumper, so I don't know how much it's going to matter. Guys, I have been fortunate enough to be around some great jumps coaches in my life. Uh, when I was in college at Cornell, Nathan Taylor had coached All-Americans, even some national, a couple of national champions. Uh, back at Amador Valley when I got there, we had Rich Jones coaching high jump. Uh, we had, you know, Tyler Huff was coaching high jump. That's where he cut his teeth as a coach before he went on to coach at Baylor. Uh, now he's back here with us. Um, we had uh, Coach Kosey, who was a jumps coach for us. Uh, now Elias Pico's coaching jumps. Uh, Joe Stocking had coached jumps. Lauren Simmons is helping out with jumps. So a lot, of, a lot of very knowledgeable people over the course of the years. Uh, unfortunately, I was never coached by any of them. Uh, my only jump, jumping experience came in eighth grade when our distance coach, Jim Poss, insisted that all distance runners do a field event at every meet and a sprint at every meet to go along with their distance event. One day, it was, you know, the high jump came up. I was like, go over there and do that. I said, how do you do it? He said, you run at it and you jump over it. So that's, that's what I know. Um, I, I bring a PR of either 4-2 or 4-4. I can't even remember uh, from that excellent coaching. I'm going to check our measurements here before we start. Let's see what our opening height's going to be. Just want to make sure that you guys can see what we're doing here. We've got our rule. Uh, yeah, let's get this where you can see it. It's 18 inches, so our opening height is going to be uh, one foot six inches. Spalding is going to open the Corona Indoor Nationals to a rousing ovation. 
And he's clear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> First attempt clearances at one foot six for both athletes. And so we're gonna have to measure the next height. So hopefully you guys can see this, that's 33 inches. We're talking about, you know, two foot nine. So two foot nine will be our second height. Spalding on his first attempt. I want to really take the time to commend the fans of track and field. Uh, this is a look at our South Grandstand and you'll notice that despite everything that's been going on recently, there's just about as many fans here as there are at a normal track meet. It's been a riveting competition so far with first attempt clearances at one foot six and two foot nine. Uh, the bar has been raised a little bit. We're going to find out how high it's raised and then move on to our third height. This would be a lifetime best for Spalding if he's able to clear it. And just like any sport, equipment is an important part of the high jump. And so after that last jump, I slipped a little bit. I decided to switch to shoes. So I'm wearing shoes for this attempt. Shoes are usually recommended in the high jump, even indoors. Um, I didn't use them for the first two jumps, but uh, I'm going to use them now. So as you guys saw, I missed my first attempt at uh, three foot three. It, it's a big height. Um, <clears throat> this is usually where the high jump gets pretty interesting. You know, there's two of us left because two, only two of us started. Uh, we were both through our first two heights clean and Spalding made it through his third height clean and I missed. Uh, so, you know, strategy is a big part of this game, uh, but there's some bad news. Uh, in that in that attempt, when Spalding hit the bar, he actually uh, he broke his nose. Um, so Spalding is regrettably going to have to withdraw from the competition. Now, it's not all bad for him because Spalding withdraws with the lead. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to forego my second two attempts at three three because they wouldn't help me anyway and I'm gonna move the bar up. And if I can clear the next height, then uh, I would win because I'd be the only one left. So we're gonna move the bar up to the next height and it's a winner take all thing. I got two shots to make it. So it turns out that another casualty of my first attempt was the high jump bar. And so we'll have to replace that. Uh, We'll measure our second height here in a second, but here's the deal. If you want to continue watching this video, you have to promise to not tell my parents that I'm doing this. Uh, this was their dining room table that they gave to me when my, my dad retired and they moved. Actually, no, they gave it to me before that. Uh, but for many reasons, my parents should not find out that this is happening. Again, we'll show you guys the measurement. 
It was uh, right at 63 inches. Spalding's already got a lifetime PR if I can clear this. Uh, it would be a lifetime PR for me and hopefully I'll still be alive when I don't hit my head on anything. Uh, but here we go, I got two shots, two shots for glory. Third attempt coming up. Second one didn't look so good. <laughs> oh, not enough hip height. So there you have it, three misses, and I lost to a basketball. I might be the worst high jumper ever, but I was still second at nationals. It's kind of like what happens when Junior Olympics are at a crappy location. Thanks for coming out everybody. I hope you enjoyed the high jump as much as Spalding did and more than I did. Uh, we'll come back to you with some more indoor track and field tomorrow from the Corona Indoor Classic. Uh, hashtag Dublin 2020. Um, don't know or I'm not going to tell you what event we're doing tomorrow. You'll have to just tune in and find out. Uh, before I do sign off though, uh, just a reminder to stay patient with this whole thing guys. Uh, don't be alarmed that the numbers of coronavirus of cases of coronavirus are still jumping up and up and up. Uh, remember, we're testing a lot more people right now. The tests are coming back quicker, so that's getting better. Um, and it takes five days at least for symptoms to show up. So even though we stopped things about, you know, five days ago, we had a few measures put into place. A couple days ago, we put, you know, more strict measures in place. Hopefully they're working. But even if they are, you're going to see numbers jump for the next three, four, five days. And, and then hopefully, you know, at the end of the weekend, we'll see things start to level off. So fingers crossed for that. Uh, but don't worry about it at this point. Stay healthy. Hope your family's staying healthy. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, with some more indoor track.